Thank you so much. I appreciate everybody giving the intros. Uh, man, Allah bless you all and reward you all. That's something very important for us here. One of the things you'll find uh, is I think what Sister Cynthia said, and I think many people, especially those that are coming uh, or reverting to Islam, is that uh, family pressure. There's a lot of family pressure. You guys agree or no? Just by a show of hands. That you get family pressure, right? When you become Muslim, your family's telling you to probably come back or something's wrong with Islam and et cetera, right? Um, one, of the, one of the hopes that we have in our classes, that we weekly classes every Friday, every Sunday, is that you guys get to know one another and help, help through that family pressure by having someone as a support system or a mentor or just a brother or sister, a shoulder to lean on, if you will, right? Where you guys can talk with one another. So one of the objectives of these uh, activities as well is to make sure that we don't just group up in the same groups, rather we get to know one another, right? So I wanna make sure today everyone takes a few minutes out to introduce themselves. I know we did a general introduction, but at the same time, I want everyone to introduce themselves to somebody that they don't know. Maybe you know, you know half the class or a good percentage of the class there, there's still people that you don't know, right? So I want to make sure that you do, uh, you know, private or individual inv uh, 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 got it. Um, introductions to one another so that everyone gets to know one another. Number two, there's still a lot of food left over, so make sure everybody gets food. We do have drinks. For those of you, if you missed the drinks, it's right in the back there. We have coffee, tea, sodas, juices, so help yourselves. And number three, something I wanted to add uh, today uh, with everyone is please don't be shy. This is not a place to be shy, so make sure you guys get food. Uh, you know the Hajj or the pilgrimage just about finished, right? Everybody's aware of that? And a lot of people that went for pilgrimage, they're actually coming back. So uh, or they've, already either they've already been back, or I mean they're already here, or they'll be here in the next few days. But I came across, what I wanted to do was show a little documentary on Hajj. How many of you in here have been for Hajj or Umrah, for pilgrimage or the lesser pilgrimage? Alhamdulillah, four times, okay. Rami, so two, anybody, okay, sister, three. Anybody else? So about three, three, four people, right? Uh, so for many of us, this might be like something that we really, really want to do, uh, obviously, uh, once in our life, right? So I wanted to show a small documentary on the Hajj process. It's a very nice documentary I came across. It's short, I, there's many for like an hour plus, right? But I wanted to show one. Uh, for this class. So today is, I wish we had popcorn too, right? Just pop the popcorn and watch a movie kind of thing, right? But we have something better. But this is uh, actually uh, a group leaving from China uh, for Hajj, for pilgrimage. It doesn't actually get into the pilgrimage. It's right up until they leave for pilgrimage. But it's very interesting because, as you know, Islam has a history all over the world of, of how Islam entered different lands, right? Islam has been in China for a long time. There's millions of Muslims in China, right? But unfortunately, we don't know about our history in China or many parts of the world, right? So what this documentary does is shows you uh, briefly our history, meaning Islam in China, and how for so many, so many years they've been doing the Hajj and the pilgrimage. So what we're going to do is, at the same time, if you guys need to adjust your chairs, go ahead. Uh, but eat, enjoy yourselves, but at the same time, we watch a short documentary, about 22 minutes. Afterwards, this is a hangout session, so just, you know, we're going to hang out, have a good time. But please make sure to introduce yourselves to other people, especially people that you don't know. Number two, we don't want anybody sitting by themselves. That's like a rule in this class. So make sure everybody's sitting with someone. Is that okay? All right, Edwin, you get the lights for me, brother? The ancient city of Xi'an, in the Shanxi province in central China, home to the Terracotta Army and the center of Chinese civilization during the Tang Dynasty, home also to about 60,000 ethnic Chinese Muslims. Xi'an boasts an Islamic history of more than 1,300 years, when Islam was first introduced to China in 650 AD by one of the Prophet Muhammad's companions. Xi'an's Muslims are proud of their Islamic history and their country's traditions. They have merged their own ancient Chinese culture with Islam, remaining faithful to the central tenets of their religion. Muslims This is Ma Yi Ping. Everyone in Xi'an's Muslim community knows him as he is one of 10 Imams at the most famous mosque in the city. He is also their Hajj religious teacher.
This is Mr. and Mrs. Jia Wang Yi, a couple in their 60s who have finally managed to save enough money to go on the Hajj. They all belong to the Muslim community of Xi'an. And since the 15th century, their ancestors have been making their way to Mecca in Saudi Arabia for the annual Hajj pilgrimage. In the past, during the days of the Silk Road, all journeys either began or ended here in the city of Xi'an. Many travelers have passed through the city over the centuries, and today it's no different. This is the Muslim quarter of Xi'an. These days, tourists wander through these little alleys, soaking in the experience of China. The global language of trade and bargaining is often heard among the stalls. No, no, 35, this is my final price. Eight. No, no, five. <laughs> this Sudanese businessman regularly visits Xi'an. He has come to this shop to purchase scrolls of Islamic calligraphy. Here, requests for specific Islamic verses are written on the spot. The shop owner is Imam Ma Yi Ping, who is able to converse with his visitor in fluent Arabic. Forty-six-year-old Imam Ma began studying calligraphy more than 35 years ago when he was a young boy at a time when many mosques were either closed or destroyed. He had no access to books at that time. But that did not stop him from practicing each stroke and phrase over and over again. In the 1990s, he studied calligraphy at the Islamic University in Medina, and later went to Egypt where he honed his craft. Today, he is one of the best known Islamic calligraphy artists in Xi'an and his works have caught the attention of many state leaders overseas. Uh, 贡献 Imam Ma lived inside the Great Mosque until he was six years old and became Imam at the age of only 16 when the mosques throughout China reopened after having been closed by the Communist Party in 1959. The 1966 Cultural Revolution 
had led to the destruction of more than 29,000 mosques throughout China and the death of untold numbers of Muslims across the country. Despite the persecution, Islam survived. The northern route of the famous Silk Road originally started here in Xi'an, and today it is the symbolic center of Islam where the first mosque in China was built. The Muslims here are from the Chinese ethnic minority called the Hui people. Living in the ancient capital of the Chinese Empire, they have one of China's most ancient mosques in their neighborhood, the Great Mosque of Xi'an. Measuring 12,000 square feet, the Great Mosque is one of the oldest and most renowned mosques in the country. The Xi'an Muslims are very proud of this precious legacy, and it is the center of their religious life. Although there are 21 other mosques around, it is to the inner courtyards and prayer hall here that many of the faithful flock to perform their daily prayers. Imam Ma is one of 10 Imams that handle the affairs of the mosque. As an Imam, Wa When he is not at his shop or the mosque, Imam Ma makes it a point to spend time with his youngest son. He hopes that his son will follow in his footsteps and grow up with the vocation of teaching others about Islam. Allahu <laughs> 所以我当时有一种利益Imam Ma has performed the Hajj several times before. He is well placed to provide guidance to new pilgrims and teaches them some special prayers to make while in Mecca. Quanzi Just a few streets away from Imam Ma is the house of Jia Wang Yi. For the past year, Mr. Jia has been diligently transcribing the Quran into Chinese.
我这是写的《古兰经》，是用我们中国的传统的墨笔来写的《古兰经》，整整写了一年多，写了一套，这是我写写的全部一套。已经写过一套了，这已经是这是第二套了。我们中国的毛笔字，是我们几千年传统的，是很了不起的一种文化。所以我用中国的汉字来写我们的神圣的《古兰经》，所以我感到很荣幸。我父亲呢，写毛笔字呢已经很多年了，呃，他现在呢，慢慢的给我的孩子，也就是他的孙子，在传授，呃，如何写毛笔字。对于我们家族来说呢，肯定呢，呃，会把这个呢发扬下去。呃，每一代人呢，都尽可能的用毛笔呢，呃，写《古兰经》，因为写《古兰经》呢。对我们的宗教以及对我们的信仰，也是一种加固，一种巩固。这是古兰经，这个古兰经，中国人用毛笔字写的古兰经，是用阿语写的，距现在呢已经有四五百年的历史了。这是中国的老阿红、大阿红。用自己的心血写出来的杰作，整个世界上保存下来的呢，已经很少了。这是我们的家传的呃宝贝，也是伊斯兰教文化的宝贝。现在已经在市面上很很少见到这种东西了。马海那个，马海那个，对，我名善人，我名善，还是给呢。Mr. and Mrs. Ja have been saving up for this holy event of a lifetime. They have been preparing for the Hajj physically and spiritually, conscious of the need to perform the pilgrimage as sincerely as they can. Thank you. 阳光那太强烈了，那那要将近温度四十多度呢，所以就是像我们这个老人就配备了一副这个擦拭的，颜色比较深一点的眼镜，清凉的，然后风油精的、清凉油的，还有那个藿香正气粉的，这都是必备的一些这药。在他们那个人家那个国家，跟咱们这个用药也有所区别，所以咱们这个习惯于用咱们这个药，把咱们这个药做必须多带一点啊。下来以后，第一个是我们坐飞机以后，没得在汽车上坐。我们要礼拜的时候，就是呃，洗不成，就是拿这个石头打土井，可以礼拜。就在这十来年以前吧，我一直呃想去。每一年别人去了以后，我心情都激动。哎呀，只要人家走，我去送人家，我的心情都激动，恨不得我扒上车跟上他们一起走，就是那个感受。今年呢，真主给他口花，我的口花到了，我跟我丈夫一块儿去，你心情特别的激动。就有两个月之前吧，到现在，我都是呃准备东西。见了我姐姐，别人去过的人，我都问呀，去了拿啥东西，穿啥衣服，呃，还需要啥？我他们给我一说，我回来就准备。哎、呃，回来反正是心不定，做在家里做啥都心不定，就是呀，恨不得马上就去。叫你到北京之后再把这随身去随身背。就现在先装一下。书本都准备好了，该背的都背过了。该那个该准备的衣服、药药品，什么都准备好了，所以现在就是自自自呃准备出发
，心情很高兴，所以啊，呃，这是我一件很激动的事情，很好，很好，很好。是呀，让俺们让俺们坦白的，大家给俺们要坦白嘛，俺们那二两红毛龙马开三百。Mr. and Mrs. Ja will be part of a group of 251 pilgrims leaving for the Hajj from the city of Xi'an. As the community is so closely knit, practically everyone knows who is going from their neighborhood. The pilgrims do not get any special subsidies from the government to perform the Hajj. For those who are not well off, it's a matter of saving throughout their lifetime until they can afford the trip. <laughs> It's the day of departure at the household of Mr. and Mrs. Ja. Relatives and friends come to bid them farewell. The couple's youngest daughter is not feeling well and is overcome with emotion at her parents leaving home. Mr. and Mrs. Ja are both the anchor and pillar of the household. Their children are finding it difficult to deal with their impending absence. With the time to depart drawing close, the couple's eldest son, Ren Ping, has to pull his parents away from the well-wishers so that they don't miss their train. The pilgrims will make their way to Xi'an Central Railway Station, close to the Muslim quarter. From there, they will take a train to China's capital, Beijing, where they will board a plane to Mecca. The day is charged with emotion ranging from the sadness of goodbyes to the elation at the prospect of pilgrimage to Mecca. <laughs> Ren Ping tries to keep his parents together while at the same time looking after his unwell sister. For each pilgrim that leaves for the Hajj, there is usually a large send-off party. It all adds up to thousands of people at the Xi'an Central Railway Station. Managing the crowds is a challenge for the authorities. Imam Ma is being sent off by his immediate family. As this is his fifth time to Mecca, they are well adjusted to his absence. This is the first time Mr. and Mrs. Ja will have traveled outside China. Their children have never been apart from them since they were born. The thought of not seeing their parents for the next one month is a daunting prospect. As they pull themselves away from their loved ones, the road to Mecca 
lies ahead for the Muslim pilgrims from China. All right. So what do you guys think? Interesting, right? Like I, I, can, I mean, there's longer documentaries over an hour about the whole process. This takes you right before they leave, but it's very interesting to see how different people from different parts of the world, they go for the pilgrimage and Hajj. And being that we're in the season right now, it's really good to know. So uh, any comments from anybody? I don't know about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are definitely a lot of uh, Chinese Muslims that are going through a lot uh, in China, right? Uh, but there's millions of uh, Chinese Muslims over there. But uh, regarding that, I, I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, we, we pray for our brothers and sisters all over the world. And there's Muslims all over the world. And especially right now, many of them going through a lot of trials and tribulations. That's why in your prayers, always make sure to remember your brothers and sisters uh, all over the world. We should never be selfish in our prayers. No doubt we want to pray for ourselves and our families, but you also want to make sure that you pray for other people. Uh, even for non-Muslims, of, of course, right? Many of them being our family members, we pray for their guidance, we pray for everything, right? So we want to make sure that we're not selfish in our prayers. Um, comments? Just don't ask me which food item was the best. Because somebody put me on the uh, uh, <laughs> last time, but they're all delicious. I, I, we, we, I think we love them all, so may Allah bless you all. Yes, Tashayimi? Yeah. Uh, so, t yeah, so the question is, are we going to have, like, a workshop on Hajj? Like the uh, on, on the pilgrimage itself? So typically we do that before the, the when everybody leaves. So we already did it. Uh, yeah, no, it's okay. But online, if you guys want, if you go online, you just put in IOC, I think, Hajj or Pilgrimage Workshop. It should be online. We recorded everything. If not, on the IOC TV page, if you go on calislamic.com, their page, it should be on there as well. So, yeah. Imad. Please. I mean, I mean, yeah, so it's a good point. I mean, before, uh, typically before you go for the pilgrimage, the Hajj, uh, every community or every other community or somebody within that community, they're going to have a workshop, kind of teaching you the, uh, you know, the basics of what to do and so forth, right? You're going to have a group leader. They're going to take you through what to do because uh, obviously it's going to, it's something that you probably do once a year, uh, once a lifetime, right? So it, it is a refresher for those that also are going a few times. I give, but it's also very important to make sure you study. Some people say, I'm just going to rely on, the two, uh, on my uh, guide and the guide will take care of everything. Don't do that. You want to make sure you study it. And I'll give you a true story. Uh, when I went about two years ago with my mom and my wife, uh, right when we got there, one of the first things you're going to do is tawaf, right? You're going to go around the Kaaba seven times. So uh, fortunately, I was studying as much as I could, the whole family. We got to like the, probably the third time we're going around, the third, uh, third round, and a huge group came and just broke us all up. And because you can't manage, it's very difficult. They didn't do it purposely. It's just, you know, the energy and people going, all millions of people, right? And so thus, I was like, oh, okay. So I got separated uh, from my wife. My mom was still with me. I was holding both of them, but my wife got separated. That's how big this group was, right? 
Uh, but again, nothing against them. It's just uh, there's so many people. It's hard. So now we're like, okay, so what do we do? Now, if we didn't study, you would probably would, it would be very difficult. You say, okay, I think I do this. I think I have to do that. So it was a good uh, learning experience for me that l fortunately we had studied. So we knew how to finish it up, go back. And, I, and even though it was literally like a few seconds, I still could not see my wife. And we just broke up here, right? And I, you would think, oh, she's just right there. No way. Once that rush comes, you have millions of people, right? Thousands and millions of people there. You can't see anything. You're just like a sea of people. So um, uh, put your trust, obviously, in Allah, and then the tour guide will help you. But make sure you study as well, because I think the majority of us, inshallah, we're going to get an opportunity to go. On that note, I sent everybody who's in our WhatsApp group, their brothers and sisters, you guys saw the, the message that went out for our Umrah. Umrah package. So Umrah is a lesser hajj, right? It's just a one notch down, if you will, with Sheikh Mustafa on behalf of IIOC. It's going to be, uh, anybody have it with you? Can just pull it up, the date. Is it in December? 17th of November. So November 17th is for, yeah, that's right. So it's about a week. And, and uh, pricing-wise, it's, it's very good. Uh, it's very, very cheap. Uh, because you're looking at hotel, lodging, airfare, all that good stuff, right? If you're interested, I would highly recommend you to go. Highly recommend. There's already people signing up, so I'm not sure how much space they have. Usually it's limited space depending on the package. If you guys are interested, make sure you guys sign up. So again, I send it to everyone on the WhatsApp group. If you're not on that WhatsApp group, if you're a new Muslim brother or sister, or even if you're a mentor, let me know. I can plug you in and put you on that group. Uh, we had a few more. Uh, we have a hand over here, someone? Catherine? Yeah, so that basically, uh, they were talking about like tayammum. tayammum. I, I didn't see that part right now when we were sitting, so I would have to go back and check. But uh, being that there's, uh, it's like, uh, you know, when you don't have access to water, then there's something called tayammum, like a dry ablution, where you rub over like the earth, and then you, you wipe over certain parts of your body, and that will substitute for the wudu only because you had no access to water. So I, maybe she was hinting towards that. I didn't see that part right now, so. Okay, good, good. Mm, interesting. No, no. Uh, oh, were you talking about the part where sh they're going to stone? No. no. Something else. Yeah, I don't think she was talking about that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So just as a substitute, yeah. Because there's a part, the reason you're like throwing stones, Jamal, what are you talking about? So there's a part where you have to, you know, uh, throw some stones and stuff. Uh, we're not going to go into detail about it right now, but there is a part like that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Exactly. So if there's no access to water, then there's certain restrictions for that as well, certain uh, concessions for that as well. Everyone doing good? Is it just a food coma or what? <laughs> okay, perfect. So we're going to turn the lights on uh, because they're obviously not all the way on. Uh, but I want you guys to not leave yet. I want you guys to hang out and get to know one another. This is a show social time activities. There's dessert there as well. For those of you, if you didn't see, some people came a little bit later on. We do have dessert. Help yourself to dessert. Get to know one another. Have a good time. And then uh, let's, just, uh, let's just kind of write it out like that. Again, um, for those of you that uh, are not on the group and you're new Muslims, let me know. Number two, uh, if there's any other questions that you guys have, if you want to talk privately, I'm always available. Let me know. And number three, for those of you that are coming for the first time here at IOC, we thank you for taking time out on a Sunday and joining us here. May Allah bless you and reward you. And uh, make sure we also don't waste any food. That's something I forgot to mention earlier. Let's not waste any food, but let's have a good time. All right? Is that good with everyone? Okay. Inshallah. That, that means we're in a food.